All right, uh, Madam Chair, it looks like we have everyone here that's needed. So, whenever you'd like to get start, um, you know, happy to uh, call a roll after you want to call the meeting order. Um, let's, um, okay, today is. Um, so I'm going to order a rolling. All right. Um, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Be sure you were, um, I guess kind of. Cutting out a lot there, but I, I think I don't know if uh, everyone got the gist of it. That called the meeting to order, so I'll do roll, and then I'll go through our um, introductory slides, which I now realize I usually do before we call the meeting to order. But I apologize for <laughs> switching it up today. Uh, so, Ms. Anderson, here. Do you have it on yours? Uh, Ms. Flaherty? Do we lose her? Okay, okay. sorry. Um, to Frandorf? To Frandorf? To Frandorf? Here. Ms. Lan? Here. Mr. Miller? Mr. Persons? Here. Mr. Talley? Mr. Tripitano? Here. Here. And Ms. Marinucci? All right, Madam Chair, it appears we do have a quorum. Um, also wanted to note, uh, you know, here myself, as well as Jessica Beam from the Landmarks Commission office and our new AmeriCorps service member started today uh, with the Ohio History Corps, Andrew Zelina. He's joining us as well. So um, we are all in our conference room. So I apologize if the audio is not of great quality, but we're still trying to get everything set up. Can you hear me now? Okay, I, I apologize for <laughs> we're having some technical difficulties. Surprise, surprise. Um, but uh, yeah, so meetings called to order. We've done roll, so I'm just going to go through our introductory slides real quick. Again, it's the Historic Ohio City Design Review Advisory Committee. Um, Just to go over the virtual meeting regulations and procedures, the meeting shall be conducted according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by roll call vote. Recusal due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the start of any presentation. The recused committee member will then leave the meeting for the duration of the case discussion. The chair will call the meeting to order and ask for a roll call of the committee. The administrator will then introduce the first project. The meeting will then be turned over to the applicant to proceed through their presentation. Each presentation should be completed prior to questions and comments from the committee. Once the presentation is concluded, the administrator will provide any background information when applicable and read any public comment received. The committee will then begin deliberations and project review. Please use the raised hand feature if you'd like to speak. After deliberations and review concludes, the committee will render its recommendation and or motion. The applicant may leave the meeting after their project review is complete. Uh, all projects will follow the same format until all projects are heard by the committee. Once all projects are heard, the chair will call for any committee or administrator reports. 
After all reports have been heard, the chair will adjourn the meeting. Regarding community comments, any and all community members may provide their written comments, thoughts, or questions regarding projects presented to the committee. Community members may also telephone their comments or <coughs> questions to the committee administrator. All comments, thoughts, or questions must be submitted to the committee administrator no later than 48 hours prior to the start of the meeting. Public comments received after the deadline will not be heard by the committee. Public comment will be collected by the landmark staff and sent to the committee members for a review prior to the scheduled meeting. Landmark staff will summarize any received comments. The applicant of the project is under no obligation to answer any community questions. Community members are invited to attend design review advisory committee meetings, but there will be no open public comment period. Uh, all projects are being reviewed using the Secretary of the Interior's standards for rehabilitation and are being considered for the issuance of a certificate of appropriateness. All projects are considered on a case by case basis and the historic Ohio City Design Review Advisory Committee makes recommendations to the Cleveland Landmarks Commission. Recommendations are not final actions. Depending on the scope of the project, submissions may be approved administratively or will need to be reviewed by Cleveland Landmarks Commission. Uh, projects will be scheduled at the next available commission meeting after an action is taken, if that's the case. Um, so with, yeah, move some windows around. So with that, um, we will move on to our first case which is uh, HOC 24-28 at 4125 Lorraine Avenue. It's the uh, Sacred Vortex signage. I believe Steve Foster from uh, Signs and Graphics Firm is here. So yes, Steve, hello. You want to presentation, just let me know when you want me to change slides. Okay, sure. The, so this first slide is showing basically the uh, design concept for this blade sign. It's a non-illuminated uh, blade sign, which um, which is a full color uh, UV laminated print, and it uh, it hangs as you can see to the left of the entrance, at least on that upper left corner, <clears throat> and um, you could change the slide, I guess. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, this shows the storefront and. Um, the uh, concept for the windows, uh, there's a perforate, uh, the, the door on the left has the perforated vinyl window graphics um, with the hours on it. This permits, uh, you know, uh, viewing uh, if someone's inside looking out, they can see if someone's behind the door ready to come in. So that's why we use the perf on that. And um, the other graphics there are shown on the, the at the bottom of the windows that are uh, vinyl. And then they, each of the, you know what? This slide is not the latest slide. Hmm. Um, I had sent an updated version, which has just below uh, this image, there is a, um, a listing of the decals. Uh, each of the windows, beginning with the one on the inset part of by the entrance, that one says Kava Kratom, and then moving from that to the left to right, the, the next one says Blue Lotus, the next one Kambuka, the next one Kratom Kambuka, then Community, then Arts and Music, and the last one says Good Vibes. It's hard to see on that image, but uh, that's in those little slivers uh, that are, are um, at the top of the vinyl graphics shown on those windows. It, they're really it's not legible in the picture yeah uh, but it's if you're standing in front of the thing you, you can you can clearly read them and then the last slide just shows uh locations uh nearby uh other businesses and uh a, a aerial view to show um where this is actually uh in, from a street view Are there any questions?
Can I get clarification today on what we're getting approval for? If it's just this blade sign or if it's also the decals on the windows? Yeah, it's for uh, the blade sign primarily, but certainly uh, the decals, yeah. I guess this is a question for Dan. Um, I guess our understanding was that you'd be reviewing um, and, and approving all of the signage, so the entire signage package. And I'm, I'm trying to get up um, the other the other presentation that uh, Steve referred to that has the updated information. So I'm, as soon as I pull that up, I will add it to the screen. Um, thanks, Steve, for presenting. I'll, I'll just go. I feel like I'm definitely not the most senior member of this, but um, the sign to me from that sidewalk looks quite big. Uh, and projecting out quite a bit, like 46 inches, almost four feet. Um, do we know if this if this um, rendering with the side of the building is, is that to scale? And it, it, I, I feel like this needs to be shrunk down a little bit. Um, the sign image is fine, but it just seems to be really projecting and I don't know, a little low. Um, I, and then hopefully Dan can Maybe this is it uh, with some second ones here. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. So what? Yeah. So that second image shows uh, what's happening on the windows, basically, uh, with the with the uh, the lower part of that graphic shows basically what I was describing earlier. Uh, how the windows, uh, the text in that nine inch part of the of the vinyl graphics, what that text says on each of the windows. And then if you scroll up to that other, uh, the first one, uh, you can see that I had changed the height of the sign is it's 102 inches roughly um, to where that is uh, above the sidewalk. Um, yeah, so it's, so it's certainly high enough, uh, you know, according to, uh, you know the the min, minimum amount that's needed above the uh, grade there but as far as the size it's very similar to what's right across the street from it um that signage across the street and other signs in that neighborhood are are about the same scale so the um do you mean the bng yeah i, I think that's probably the biggest one it's also yeah um i'm kind of interested because what's What's right after that sign? After B and G? Like maybe Heart of Gold is right next door. I, I think Heart of Gold's sign is very well proportioned and sized. Um, I'm not, I, I think traditionally our standards are like conforming and there's all these Secretary of Interior rules. I, as kind of the most lay person here and not an architect, I'm just gonna use lay terms and say it seems a little bit too big. Um, and then I'm just going to finish all my comments and end. I think the, I'm not sure if there's too many other entry doors that are fully, I know it's perforated, but the white, uh, I think generally most of the other businesses are using just like not white, like transparent. Um, and then with storefront glass, I think there's some sort of rule again, someone please correct me, but there's like a percentage limit. Um, I think again the design seems cool. Uh, I like the colors of the window decal. Uh, I'm just not sure if it seems like a little bit too much. Um, so, but I think it's I, overall the design excellent. I think application. I don't know if others might have opinions or like really good advice for Steve on how to optimize this. That's all. Thanks. Thanks. I have a question. Also... Oh, go ahead, Mara. Um, I have a question about how you're attaching the sign to the existing brick wall. Is the plan to screw into the mortar joints or anchor into the mortar joints, or what's what's the detail look like on that? Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, I know there's a preference for the mortar joints. Um, I feel like the mortar joints are are uh, not the strongest place to put to anchor the sign but we're going to use uh, anchors 
with um, you know light bolts to uh, and we've got uh, eight total to do that. So okay, uh, just for our standards, um, it is preferable to go into the mortar joints if you can. And I don't know if perhaps a reduction in the size would also help with the number of screws. I'll just pop in um, one thing I'm thinking of. I'm from OCI. I'm not technically like on the committee, but I come here all the time. Um, it's just accessibility and the font can be kind of hard to read. And then also where it says tea house and kombucha. -y. Um, do you know how tall that's going to be? Like how big the letters are going to be? The tea house and kombucha? Yeah. On the, on the actual sign there? Yeah. I don't know that uh, the answer to that, but they're not very big. Okay, it, they look um, a little small because I see where it says like six inches elsewhere, and like I yeah. don't know. Anyway, it's just thinking about, um, especially since it's going to be up high and not lit up, like that people can read it. Right. Yeah. If you so, if you're standing, which is the idea behind it primarily, it's not necessarily necessarily very visible because of the trees that are along the the uh, the street there. But uh, it's really meant for people to see it from the sidewalk. And when you're underneath it, it's, it would be pretty legible. Um, as far as the, the sacred vortex design, this is the, the owners came up with this design. And um, actually, the sacred vortex itself was quite a bit smaller prior to this version. So we, uh, we got some feedback early on that, that it wasn't legible. So we made it as large in this circle that we could to keep and, and still kind of keep his design together, so. I just have two comments and they've largely already been made, but uh, to reemphasize that this should be mounted into the mortar and not the brick, I, I understand mm -hmm. why, but there will come a point in this building's future when this sign is no longer there uh, and it's mm -hmm. much easier to remove when it comes out of the mortar. And you can mm -hmm. plug that with other mortar than than destroying or harming the brick. So mm -hmm. that's I understand. for me that's the that con that condition. Um, okay. And then uh, to uh, another point about the size of it, I, I agree that forty six inches uh, appears large, but I can't recall. And I was looking at my files and I couldn't easily pull one up. What the typical blade sign height we've approved in the past? I want to say it's about ten inches smaller, but I can't find a file to back that that uh, hunch up. Dan, do you know? Um, I, I, I know you certainly have approved quite a few at 36 inches. Um, yeah. Like on, on primarily on West 25th Street, it's coming to mind. Um, there well, if you go further there. down, uh, there's the Greek village. They're like four feet right across the street. And I don't recall the, the, the name of the, uh, the, the storefront, but it's right across the street from basically from this and uh, it's got a four foot round blade sign on a uh, looks like an oriental hanging uh, uh, bracket but uh, it, Look, it, looking they, at the signs across the street they're mounted much higher on the building than this one's proposed so I think like maybe it's either keep it larger and move it up or if you want it closer to the um, sidewalk, then make it a little bit smaller. We could mount it higher. Um, I, I don't think we want to make it smaller, but we could possibly move it up some. Well, I would second that, Mark. I'd either go to 120 inches off the ground, keep it at 46 inch diameter, or leave it at 102 inches and go to 36 inch diameter. I'd be on board with that. I'd agree. I'm I'm also looking at Street View now, and it looks like at least all the vinyl graphics are already installed. So I think other members can look and see how this currently looks. 
Yeah, I was going to ask the same question that you did, Angelo. I thought that there was a just a percentage of what has to be uh, clear glass versus the graphics. Um, Dan, do you do you know the answer to that? I'm thinking um, this is a Piero. I think it's you can only have twenty five percent of your window coverage, but I don't know, Julie. Do you know the regulations there along Lorraine? I'm not sure. I can see if I can find anything. I mean, I'd be willing to like just make a motion to approve as long as it doesn't exceed that lit, whatever that percentage is. Well, this, the, these graphics are actually, uh, they are already installed. I, they were not installed by me uh, or my company. Um, the owner, I don't know who he used, but he had them installed. And uh, I made comment to him about there is, is a percentage. Honestly, I don't know what that is either. It, it might be 25%, but the, uh, uh, his comment back to me was, there's lots of examples right in the area that have way more vinyl on their windows than he has on his. And if that's the case, he's like, well, you know, what's the big deal? So I understand it from, uh, you know, your position, uh, but it's something that should be considered as well. What, what is already in place around the neighborhood. Yeah, Margaret, it, it looks like it is 25%, I believe. Um, so, you know, I don't know with these, I don't know that we can calculate whether this meets that 25% or not based on these graphics, but um, if you wanted to make your motion contingent upon them, um, you know, either adhering to or scaling the graphics down so that they met that 25%, um, you know, that could certainly be worked into a motion um, I believe this project is going through the storefront renovation program. No, no, it's not. Sorry. No. Uh, um, but I, I guess I, in addition to just the window graphics themselves, I think that the perforated vinyl on the door, if I'm reading that right, um, will also count as you know part of that coverage. So that'll be part of your 25% as well. So let me ask a question about that because you know if there was a blind that was on the inside of the door that covered everything. That's not really much, not much different than this perforation. I mean, I did on the the drawing on that second drawing in the inset there, uh, show you what the graphics actually are, um, if that helps. You know, the hours are 12 inches by 13 and the his logo is 26 inches round. It's just, I mean, the graphics in terms of overall door is not, uh, that much, but there is the white. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, more, it's more an issue that you're obscuring the glass, so you can't see in. Um, that's the issue oh, yeah. with the PRO regs. Um, what you know, what we typically look for and ask for it and like to see mm -hmm. is, you know, just that graphic, and then you know the number, like the the hours and that sort of details underneath it, but done in a a lighter color like white so that you can actually read them on the dark glass but essentially having those as cut out instead of with the white background i understand and it looks um, like uh sorry real quick the 25 percent is the window glass between two and a half feet and seven and a half feet in height Everyone, I apologize in general because I'm having audio connection issues. Um, I'm in public because I'm between meetings, but my AirPods won't connect. So I apologize for background noise and I will make this concise. I agree with my colleagues that if they want to have the 46 inch side, it needs to be higher or they want it at this location that they should scale it down to something more compatible, like with the heart of gold side um, size. And in terms of the vinyl, uh, while I can appreciate that, you know, you could probably point out a lot of different things happening in the neighborhood. Uh, the difference is if people are getting permits or not, and this is a path you're pursuing with a permit, which thank you. Um, this is just code. 
So it's really mm -hmm. not uh, up to us. It's no, code. So, so no. we're just pointing it Don't out it. Um, because we can't approve something, you know, we can't recommend approval okay. or approve something unless if, if it's not to code, it doesn't matter. The city will pull up the code. So I understand. Um, appreciate that. Yeah, and I, I did just want to point out since this is sign code and we're, we're talking about the landmarks commission does have the authority to vary the sign code. So if you guys, you know, feel strongly about loving the graphics, just the way they are, even if they are more than 25%, you can make the recommendation to the landmarks commission to approve it. Um, as presented, you know, with support for any needed variances, and then the commission could grant those variances, uh, next week when it. Presumably, this goes before them. Well, I did a quick calculation on the window graphics for you. Uh, as a percentage of the window for the, uh, it comes out to about 35%. So it's a little more than the 25. Does any other member have any feedback? Because I'm happy to offer a motion with just basically incorporating everyone's comments so far. I think Whitney's there. Who else is uh who else is here? Most, most of my comments would be redundant at this point. Um I really like the idea of reducing the um size of the sign if it's going to be at this height or allowing the 46 inches if it's going to be at 120. Um, I'm just kind of in a, with the decals already in place, I just, um, I would like to keep them at 25%, but I also don't want to hold back projects. So that's kind of where I'm torn here. Um, I just have one question. So it, it looks like there's a visual gap between the two sections of green vinyl on the glass. Do you know what that visible gap is in terms of clear glass is it, that it's a eyesight line um that's a good question it is clear glass um right but is it is that say you know 48 to 60 inches or 48 to 66 inches in height yeah yeah i believe it is actually yeah is there a way for you to double check that quick no i can't um, no i don't really have a good way to double check that I mean, I could check it, but not at the moment. Um, right, because I can see Angela just sent the, the Google order. Thank you. It, it's you, I can tell it's above the, the um, door handle. Um, door handle, yeah. So, so it's That's right. likely That's a little below eyesight line. But knowing how um, limited the vinyl is at or just just below eyesight line, um, I personally don't have an issue because they're already installed that this is uh, slightly above the 25%. I agree with that. I just would prefer that the door be as Dan had suggested, um, you know, the hours and the logo on the clear glass. I think it would be more inviting. And then also, you know, it wouldn't be so obvious that it's exceeding that that percentage. Okay. If we added a condition to remove the white um, behind the entry door, I would, I would second that. All right, so just for the sake of moving this along, I'll go ahead and make a motion and we can discuss and tweak. Um, but I think the motion would be to um, uh, approve uh, with conditions of changing the door signage slash vinyl so that it's not 100% coverage of the door. I think I would recommend um, 
some sort of condition or recommendation where maybe just the logo and just the boundary around the hours could be uh, light or white colored for contrast with the font text. That's one. Uh, number two is the 46 inch sign is either raised up higher or if at the current proposed height made to match the immediately adjacent signage, such as Heart of Gold. Um, I am happy to change this, but I would also say that we should keep the percentage glass at 25% just to prevent that uh, from becoming a recurring thing. Uh, so that'll be my motion. Hopefully that's an okay motion. Happy to tweak it based on what other people say, but I guess I'll wait for a second and then we'll discuss it. Can we add that the um, sound need, sign needs to be mounted into the mortar joint? Absolutely. With the absolute condition that the sign is mounted into mortar and not the brick modular units themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Second. No second. So can I get a clarification on the existing window vinyl? Is that okay as is? I know it's larger than the 25% by a bit, but is that going to be acceptable or? I think I put, in general, oh, go ahead, Angela. Oh, I just said in my in this original motion that we're doing under Robert's rules to, to not approve the 35%. Uh, and just me, I, I'm a fan of Art Nouveau. It looks like this is Art Nouveau on the bottom. I think those bottom segments, that's really cool. I don't know if there's a way to kind of put those six or seven text words somewhere else, um, but that's just clarifying what I've said before. Let me ask a quick question then. If it's if it would be all right, if where the that nine inch sliver is uh, on each of those, where the, the actual words are, uh, if we were to take off that those parts and just put in white vinyl text the the each of the words for the windows, would that be acceptable? Because it will be just text, no graphics at that level, but um, and it would keep that lower part, the re rectangular graphic forms that are at the bottom. I think your takeoff is being driven by the area of the door, which is why the motion is being um, described as it is. I think you're, if you're at 35%, I don't think that the area of the text is what's pushing you to 35%. I think it's the storefront entry door. Um, that would be my position on that. So your biggest bang for your buck is if you can adjust the storefront door, you don't oh. have to adjust anything else. That would be my take on that. I'm interested in anybody else's. I, I mean, I'm okay with the idea of changing the door, um, remove that perforated vinyl and just leave the logo, which will have a solid, uh, all the white in that logo in the background would be solid, but then we'd use uh, probably white text for the hours beneath that. Yeah, I think that's. I think Pat is able to assist with working with our zoning colleagues to make sure that we have the exact number of signage area and what would or wouldn't need to be removed to get to what code would be. Um, we're happy to work with the applicant off the meeting with that. Steve, I agree with what Chris said. Um, I think if you. I think if you remove that white background on the full door and just keep the white in the logo, and if you make the hours of the text white, I think that'd be perfect for the door. And I think uh, my colleagues are free to disagree with me, but I think the remainder of the uh, window vinyl would be suitable. I think changing it to just white words would maybe be a little bit better and distinguishable um, for readability, but um, yeah, that's all. Okay. So How does everyone else feel? I know we got to do a final vote. Um, are, you, are you modifying your motion, Angela? Um, yes. 
Do I have to? Which which part am I modifying? Yes. So what I have right now is approval with the condition to change the door final vinyl so it's not one hundred percent coverage. You know, with potentially you know the logo and then a border around the text. Uh, but it sounds like what you've described kind of meets that. And then that the sign, um, if it's at forty six inches, it'd be raised so that it's at the same level as other signage in the area. Um, and then maintaining the window graphics at below 25% and that the sign be mounted into the mortar joints. So um, looking at the size of the sign, if it's you know 15 inches plus nine inch text space plus the nine inches graphic on top of that, that's about 33 inches. The windows are 96 inches tall. So they're at about a third or 35% of window coverage, as Steve said. So that doesn't even count the um, background of the door or any of the door graphics. So um, I would say if you're comfortable with the look of the window graphics now, you could approve them with support for any needed variances and with the condition that you remove the background from the door. Yeah, if, if my motion needs changed, I, I want my motion to read what you just said. I think I think my motion is generally okay. Uh, I guess the change would be the condition for the door logo to have a white background, the hours in white text, no other white background on the door. Right. Um, and, and again, these are just recommendations, right, to landmarks. We've kind of spotted out all the important things that landmarks will consider next. So this isn't final approval. This is just us telling landmarks kind of what we highlighted. Um, right. Okay. right, so I guess the question is, do you, did you want to remove the reduction of the window graphics down to 25%? Sure, or? yeah, uh, unless there's uh, multiple well, other colleagues. Yeah, Alex, do you second the revision to the motion? Yes. Do we need Nia to request to call the roll or if there's any other discussion? Yeah, unless she's, if her audio is working. Dan, can you call the roll, please? Sure. All right. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Ms. Flaherty? Yes. Mr. Frondorf? Yes. Ms. Land? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Persons? Yes. Mr. Trevisano? Yes. And Ms. Marinucci. And Madam Chair, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, Steve will be in touch, but we um, we have you on the schedule for pencil in for next week's Landmarks Commission meeting. So we'll we'll send out emails about all that later. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Next up, we have. Um, Case HOC 24-27 at 1828 Fulton Road, um, some masonry wall I guess, repair and, and some wall rebuilding. Uh, we have the property owner, owner Eugene Palace here um, to talk us through what he'd like to do. So Eugene, um, I will let me know when you want me to click through the slides, please. Sure, thanks. Um, so yes, yeah, go to the first slide or second slide rather. Uh, so basically, I own the building at 1828 Fulton. Uh, it's originally in the 1920s built as a automobile dealership. Uh, it was zoned for retail. At some point in the late 60s or early 70s, it got rezoned as an industrial uh, manufacturer facility. Um, basically, what I'm asking today is, is a lot of the lentils in the building have uh heaved and it's compromising the facade walls and i'm asking permission to completely remove the facade walls and rebuild them with fresh brick uh, removing all of the infill where there were windows and basically that's it 
it's uh, mostly just a repair. So uh, as you can see, if you look at that picture where my car is parked, that's kind of a typical of what the building should have been with uh, mostly windows, uh, basically from three feet or four feet up, uh, about five feet tall, a grid-like style uh, warehouse window. Uh, go ahead, next slide, please. Uh, this West 31st place wall, as you can see, there's only two windows currently, but that entire side of the wall uh, should be mostly window systems. And I'm asking to remove all the infill and just replace all the bricks and put new lentils in. Go to the next slide, please. And this is the woodbine facing side. As you can see, there's two windows there. There should be four and they should be a little bit lower. Uh, there's about two feet of infill uh, below those uh, existing windows. Next slide. This is again the woodbine side, that far right window that you see there next to the door that should be about a foot or two lower. Next slide. Yeah, so this is the wall that I'm asking to basically rebuild. Um, really, what I need to do is just replace the rent, the lentils, but I really don't like the color of the building, and I'd like to bring it back to a natural brick. So I'm asking if I could just take it all the way down to, you know, basically to the ground level and replace it with unpainted brick. Next slide. And this wall is also the wall that I'm asking to rebuild. Uh, basically it doesn't make much sense for me to just go down to the windows when I could just remove all of it and have kind of a nicer red brick building. Next slide. Uh, this is the site plan of the property. There's uh, it's one building, but uh, the brew stop occupies the uh, Fulton side and the back half is the warehouse side where I'm proposing to do the work. Next slide. And these are just pictures of like kind of the existing, but then the drawings, you could see where there should be windows instead of brick infill. And I'm going to leave those as openings for windows. Next slide. And that's my uh, brick choice. I think I have one more picture with the mortar. Yeah, I'm going to use that tan colored mortar for the brick. And I think that's the end of it, is it? Yes, yeah, that's the end of the presentation we have. Uh, the openings that you propose to create, are, do you have, are you basing that off of uh, current conditions where the brick changes, where it, it, it appears that there was a window, or do you have a historic photograph? So, you know, and I apologize if you go in the inside of the building, uh, it's very obvious where the windows were because most of them are still there. Basically, at some point in the 50s, 60s or 70s, they put one course of brick uh, just to cover up the windows and they just basically bricked up in front of the windows. So on the inside, it's very obvious where the windows should be. Um, so like all of this, basically I'm asking to revert it to back to what it was originally, which is kind of mostly windows. And I, again, I apologize. I didn't include a picture of the inside. It's very obvious where the windows should have been because they're mostly still there. And then the windows that you are proposing, are those the, the actual windows that are currently there, the historic windows or new windows? No, unfortunately, all the windows are they're rotted beyond any type of repair. Um, I, I'm not asking for windows with this phase of the of the of the project. Um, once I get the building kind of like structurally secure, and I don't have to worry about facades falling on people. Um, at that point, I'm going to take the next steps with the architect and have a design that I could bring to you guys in regards to putting in windows or making other uh, alterations to make the building more useful. Uh, you know, in today's day. So, so you're, 
So what is the request today then if it's not, because I understand you want to rebuild these walls, but the walls have windows in them. So we've got to put something in those holes, right? Well, uh, for now, I'm just going to, I'm going to have them boarded up, painted boards. Okay, and how long do you anticipate boards being in the window openings? Uh, well, once I finish this project, uh, I want to put a new roof on the building. After that, I kind of want to get started with, you know, figuring out what the what I want to do. A year, maybe two at the most. Would it be possible to stabilize the existing windows and until you're ready to replace but use that instead of the boards unfortunately no there's really there there's so it's the the window system is like a you know eight by 14 grid like just kind of like angle iron type frame and 75 percent of them are mostly missing and 25 percent of them are basically just unusable so there's there's no way to say if i could save them i would just leave them as windows but they're they're un unusable can, can i back up for a second and just get a clarification so are you stripping every elevation of this building so it's one two three four five six so all six elevations all the way down to grade and then rebuilding them up as a brick cavity wall with insulation. Are you rebuilding basically all the walls of the building? No, I'm okay. only asking to rebuild the woodbine side, which is the, um, if you look at the site plan, it'd be the, the entire wall of West 31st place. Okay. And then the wall that that garage door is showing those are the two walls that I'm asking to fix at the moment. Eventually, okay. I'm going to rebuild all of the walls, but these are the two that are kind of in need of um, the attention the soonest. Okay. So, but those two, you're taking all the way down to grade and then rebuilding them all the way back up. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then just, just to clarify also that these walls are not, uh, they're not load bearing walls. They don't hold the roof up. The, the, the building is supported by like a pier and I beam system. And so these are just facade walls. They're not, you know, they're just there to keep the wind out. And then we, if you rebuild them, are you keeping the same detailing? Like it appears to me that there's soldier coursing for the lentils. It appears that there's some detailing at the corner where the bricks are, uh, my detail there on the corner is that will that all be replicated yeah so the above the windows there's like a soldier course it's actually in like almost like a square pattern uh it's really if you look at some of the renditions that, that the architect put up you'll see that there's kind of like a a bit of a design but yeah we plan on keeping it exactly how it was originally built is how we plan on rebuilding it a lot of that detail has been lost over the years just from other repairs done throughout the past, you know, 70 years of the building. But the, the plan is, is to keep it all as it was originally built in 1926 or whenever this building was built. What are you doing for coping on top of the wall? I'm assuming it probably had a masonry coping at the originally. It's it and it's going to stay the same. It's going to be a, a stone, uh, you know stone piece at the top either okay. i'm going to reuse what's there clean and reuse what's there or i'm going to replace it with something identical okay i so, mean i appreciate like not wanting to have the painted brick and um it looks like the i was able to read a little bit closer in the specs it looks like you're calling for a type n mortar okay um, I'm just wondering, is there, are there any other ideas about what could go in the window opening that's not just a board? Well, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I, I, the reason I'm asking for a board for now is because I haven't really decided on what direction I want to go with the building 
as a whole. Uh, right now, it's zoned for basically a food manufacturing facility. Um, you know, my my father used to own the building before I did, and and he made jelly back in the eighties and and nineties and stuff. And you know, I, I'm not really interested in getting back into the jelly manufacturing business. So, <laughs> um, in the future, in my in my mind, I kind of feel like. I want to get the building to look pretty and then maybe uh, ask to separate it into maybe two larger units and maybe rent them out as retail spaces or, uh, you know, something that would be kind of a net benefit other than just having like a random industrial warehouse in the middle of a residential neighborhood. But like until I figure out what I want to do, I just kind of was asking if you guys would let me go with some boards for now. Is there any kind of clear boarding system available? And I, uh, I don't just mean plexiglass. It... Not that I'm aware of, no. Christopher, do you know? Um, yeah, it, it's it's going to come at a cost that I think at that point you're you're probably better off starting the ball rolling on Windows, though. Um, I mean, the thing that, that occurred to me was something like a formed metal panel, like in a Met, Metco is a brand um, that basically is, think of it like a click lock, like an LVT floor, um, but you put that on a wall um, and it gives a more finished appearance uh, and you slap that on top of the wood. And at least at that point, it looks as if you've infilled windows with something that looks a bit more finished um, to the neighbors so that you're not necessarily tied to what looks like um, a new brick wall with a um, vacant, you know, vacant board applied to the to the window openings. Um, now, in my drawings, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but in sure, my sure. drawings, we did call for the boards to be painted and also have a grid style kind of stenciling done so that they do at least from afar look like a warehouse window. If we if we if we went along with the that option, would you be amenable to agreeing to some time? I don't want to leave it open ended. Would you be agreeable to a timeline that within, say, twelve months uh, of receiving approval, you have to come back with a plan for windows? Uh, we, there just needs to be some assurances that it's not boards in perpetuity. That's all. If you could give me twenty four months. I, I could definitely agree to that. Uh, the only reason I'm asking for a little bit more time is I, I have one other building that I'm finishing at West 65th and Lorraine. I'm 90% done with it. I need about six or eight more months to, to be 100% complete with that building. Then this building will have my undivided attention and, and I could really move forward with it. But, you know, life throws a lot of curveballs at you when you're doing these things. And, and as if you give me 24 months, I could most certainly uh, have something in front of you before then. Yeah. I'm going to jump in with a couple of comments. So I live across the street from this building. I look at this building probably more than any other building. Um, so I, I commend the idea to rebuild this. I understand, uh, the deteriorating conditions that it's in. And so I applaud you for taking the route of uh, kind of returning it with the natural brick as it is. Um, I, I, too, I too think that, you know, two years of something temporary uh, with the boards is a long time. Um, and kind of to mirror what Chris said to, you know, have some kind of panel or something that looks finished before you put in the final that doesn't have to be an expensive option that would be preferable. Um, and then also, as you talk about kind of rebuilding this in phase, I think also the, is that the east elevation that faces Fulton? So if you go down right, right in front of where your car is parked, I think you'd want to kind of continue that volume of space. So Dan, if you can go to slide maybe three. Yeah, one one up from this. Okay, maybe one more. Yeah, there there we go. 
So I think kind of on top of this facade in the front, as it wraps the corner to the side, that would all want to be part of kind of this first step. I could um, I could do the wall that uh, if you're talking about the wall that's facing east, the one that's uh, uh, got the windows in it still, I can do that one. I could even start going into where that man door is over there. The, the, the issue why I don't want to go any further is because Ohio City Brew Stop is still occupying that that from that basically that electric meter on to, to Fulton. And it, it's going to be too difficult to to rebuild a building and still have a tenant in there. And, and so in my mind, I was hoping that I could, you know, rehab a section, maybe carve off a thousand or fifteen hundred square feet get the brew stop to move literally right behind and then I could renovate their space and then they could move back in or some something to that effect where I could work and not have to be a disruption to their business. And then I could, you know, continue to phase two. Yeah. I, I think in my mind, it's only that, that East facade, it can Agreed. stop right where the building turns. Okay. I agree with that. I could do that. Um, and I think, you know, after giving a little bit more thought, I think one thing we could do is, um, if, if everybody agrees, get this to move forward, but then ask that you come back with something to go in those openings but beyond plywood. And I think it could be fiber cement. It could be, um, you know, some sort of panel system that has the ability to weather a little bit longer term than just plywood. And I think your architect could help you figure out what that could be. Um, just something that's a low cost alternative to just plywood uh, that allows it to be uh, exterior facing for a prolonged period of time. Um, I think that would be my position on it. I don't have any new comments other than to say thank you to the property owner for, I think this was a strong proposal. I know that the neighborhood is denied or strongly objected to slash killed other ideas for this site um, for, for various reasons. So thank you for coming back and at least improving it. Um, I'm, I'm ready to vote and approve generally along the lines of what my other committee members have said. And I think it's probably it feels safe for us to ask you to come back and at least check in. Um, but yeah, and I also want to recognize what you said. You're, I think I heard you say you're not just going to throw up raw sheets of plywood over the window openings. That's or, correct. And that's more stenciled. I think you said, so the, I'm imagining you're going to be using exterior grade sheathing. I imagine it's going to be sufficiently coated with paint to uh, extend the the lifetime of whatever that cladding is. Uh, so just thumbs up. Thanks for coming to the committee, and uh, just it's a pleasure to be working with you on this. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I agree with Angelo. In uh, would you be willing to submit as part of the approval to landmarks just uh, photographic? So that they have a, a record of its history, uh, photographs of the interior showing where the historic openings are, um, and photos showing more closely the detailing brickwork that'll be replicated just so there's a record of it. I I believe I I had a site visit with uh, Jessica Beam. Uh, it this was earlier in the year, and I believe she took pictures of the inside because I did give uh, her a tour of the inside. I don't know if she's available, if she could see if she still has those photos. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to email them to you guys. It's not, you know, no big deal either way, but I'm pretty sure you guys already have some photos of the inside. Maybe Jessica could confirm if she does, in fact, have those. Hi, for um, reviewing with the Landmarks Commission, if this does move forward with that, um, it would be preferred to have those included in the presentation as a whole. Um, and that way the Landmarks Commission can review it all together. Um, I don't believe we took any interior pictures at the time of that site visit. Not Just the exterior. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I can uh, make a motion to approve as presented uh, with the condition that there be sufficient photographic documentation detailing um, the, the brick 
detailing those to be replicated. Uh, so if there's any question, there's at least some record of that. Uh, and what, what did we agree on for the, the openings that you'd come back in 24 months? Is that what we agreed on? Or Christopher, I think you had more details on that. I think my position, which I don't know if everybody agrees with, is um, that they, the applicant comes back a bit sooner and provides some kind of actually cladding material to infill in up on top of the plywood, something that's actually rated for prolonged exterior exposure that's designed for that purpose. Okay, so then within, uh, and tell me if you want a different time frame, but within three months, come back here uh, with a proposal for how you will play on the openings, the brick openings. Would you do uh, six months? I could come back with some window proposals. I, I'd rather I'd rather come back you with you a proposal for actual windows. And I really, I, I, it's hard for me to emphasize that the boards are definitely going to be a temporary thing. Uh, it's just a matter of getting the architect on board and and figuring out an actual you know finished type product. Okay. Six uh, six months would work for me. That's a normal construction six timeline. Six months. Let me start right. the brick mills so that way it could, you know, I could secure the building. And then in six months I'll have an updated proposal for, you know, windows, let's say, and, and you guys could review it and approve it at that point. Okay. So my motion includes that you come back by uh, let's say March of twenty twenty five uh with a proposal for the openings. For the windows. Sounds good. I'll second. Dan, can you call the roll? If there's no further discussion. Sure. Uh, I'm not hearing any. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Flaherty? Yes. Mr. Frondorf? Yes. Ms. Land? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Persons? Yes. Mr. Trevisana? Yes. And Ms. Marinucci? Yes. And Madam Chair, the motion passes unanimously. Um, Eugene, we have you penciled for next week's Landmarks Commission meeting, so we will be in touch about that. Um, so, yeah. Sounds good. We'll get a hold of you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Last but um, not least. Dan uh, and my fellow committee yes. members, I have to recuse, so I will be stopping my video and I don't know if Phil is here, but. Uh, Phil is not here. Um, okay. Do we have another chair? So. Option? Yeah, um, I guess. Alex, do you want to step in as chair? Uh, sure. Um, sure. All right. Thank you. So I guess yeah, with that, we have case uh, 23 dash 100 at 2429 Superior Avenue. Bridgeworks Apartments, new construction. Um, I think we have Brandon Klein here, or Ben, um, from Geis uh, to talk us through. We saw this. As a concept. Sorry, I think we saw this as a concept a few weeks ago. Um, just making, or, or was it? It was concept uh, two times ago, and then we tabled it the last time. Okay, so we do need to, un that was the question. Yes, yeah, so we do need to untable it before we move forward with it. Thank you. Jessica. We have a motion to untable. I'll make the motion to untable. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Dan, please call the roll. All right. Uh, Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Blairy? Yes. Mr. Frondorf? Yes. Ms. Land? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Persons? Yes. Mr. Trebethat-Sano? Yes. And Ms. Marinucci is oops, um, recusing herself. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, the motion passes unanimously, so. Thank you. If the applicant wants to move forward with the presentation, just let me know when you'd like me to switch slides, please. Sure. Hi, everyone. Jen Diazio, um, consider myself to be a better stand-in than Brandon Klein, but um, he had uh, traveled today, so uh, you are stuck with me. I, I have been in front of this committee before. Um, previously, 
Um, so familiar with the project and all of the comments uh, that came out of our last meeting together. Um, the majority of the comments uh, focused on the south elevation. Um, want to express that we heard those and we respect all of that feedback. Um, we did probably about 10 different studies uh, between the week we left and, and the week to get this back submitted, um, reviewed with our client. Uh, we believe we have a, a really nice solution to present for that south side. Um, there were some other minor comments we can address, but I don't feel um, this team having seen this for the fourth time now needs all the concept background, um, but we can flash through that. If we can go through uh, slide 16, should be the elevations, the flat colored elevations. Yep. Um, so this side looks uh, fairly familiar, but I think it's a good way to look at um, the, the brick elevations, right? We've had lots of conversation about the brick elements, the, the bookends raising to the same height across the elevations. Um, and you'll see removal of some of that light beige off white color. And if we could go to the next slide. Um, and here is our south elevation. Again, that, that brick coming up, um, reduction of the white. And, and our biggest change here to that south elevation, and we'll look at the rendering in one second, um, looking at it all flat to just give some proportion of the brick overall. But in that um, kind of centered between the middle and right side book ends. Um, you can see where we've added a new texture of the gray, removed the light beige, um, and came with uh, presenting a two-story brick um, across that section over the backside of, of the tunnel to where the open markets would be. Um, feel that that balances out that overall uh, quite nicely. Um, and then we also took a look at above that brick, uh, changing the window uh, styling um, to give us a different feel uh, to that window, to that element. Um, and a little bit, as you'll see in the rendering, maybe alluding uh, to the bridge, the bridge that we're mirroring. So if we could go to slide 24. Uh, here's a revised look at elevation um, that seemed to be the, the biggest source of heartburn the last time we were here and how that brick element just starts to nicely tie the brick together. Um, the, the gray above is stepped back um, 12 inches, so we will have relief there better than indicated maybe in this flat rendering. But um, And then we kept the vertical line texture material of, of the light beige off-white. Um, which is a material we hadn't used in that color before. So we think it adds to using the same palette that we had, but introducing it in a little bit of a new way to give this section its own kind of uh, better definition. And then if we could jump back to slides 13 and 14, please. So we, we included in here um, kind of a progression of where we started and where we've gotten to um, agreeing that the solution has come a long way and, and uh, nicely resolving itself with this, this meeting and this feedback. You can see in the upper left where we were ooh, a year ago um, and how we've changed, changed the brick areas um, to find things. I don't think there was ever really any hardship with this view, but if we could go to the next slide. kind of uh, the look from upper left to upper right. Um, we originally had those brick columns and it felt a bit forced to put those columns on that large section. Um, the horizontal uh, off-white that was uh, not received very well. And then in the bottom right, our present solution um, 
creating the, the bit of a darker building that I think everybody or most folks here were more of a fan of, um, especially in relationship to another uh, context building. Um, and then how that brick just reads nicely across the bridge with, with those arch elements being repeated. Um, so I'm going to pause here. There were some minor other comments we can get to and readdress, but I think this was the big um, comment from, from or you know, how why we got tabled. Um, so I thought I'd just throw the elephant on the table and let's start talking about it. And Dan, since we're going to talk about the south elevation, could you put uh, slide 24 on the screen? I think that's the best version. And sorry, yeah. uh, Whitney, I didn't mean to cut you off. Whitney, go ahead. With you. Sorry, I just um, wanted to ask a quick question. Is there a reason that um, for that um, center brick that you did not bring it up to the second to top story? Um, the section has always been you know, need needs to be better defined uh, or broken up, I, I guess, and we felt that just repeating the same element and the same height and the same materials um, just looked like A, then B, then A, then B, then A, then B. Um, and this kind of brought a new feel to things. Uh, in this view, that elevation, you know, is not as long as it appears in, in the flat version, um, but I think in both, um, maybe the view you never see the the long horizontal view and in this one it, it just proportionately we thought the the lower brick felt right yeah and i i mean i imagine these um comments are gonna come up but when you look from the west the other angle where you have the consistency with the height of the brick and the cornice um i think that looks really nice together and um so when I was reviewing the changes, which um, thank you for, you know, particularly um, bringing the brick on the bookends higher. Um, I know that was reiterated quite a bit. Um, I really liked the uh, view from the West a lot more because of the consistency of the height of the brick. And so I actually do think, you know, I know you, you said it would feel kind of redundant, but I, I, I think it looks um, more intentional. I think it looks a lot nicer. Um, but I, I imagine that Alex is going to have some things to say about that, too. So um, I want to let him continue. Thanks, Whitney. Um, I, I happen to agree with Whitney's comments that it might, because especially since it, it appears that you have a cornice line above the arches in the middle, that if you raise that up to the same length or height, rather, as the bookends, uh, that would I think improve the design and and thank you too for raising the brick up elsewhere, Jen. I think that's uh, an improvement on the overall design. Uh, and then I did notice, but tell me if I'm wrong. It appears that the window types, the window type in the center, uh, has changed. Is that correct? Correct. It's um, you know a little more homage to a, an industrial window. Um, still working within the confines of residential windows, um, but we would add the uh interior frames to give it that more panelized look um, where we're using that vertical gray so so the divided lights the the muttons would be interior to the panes is that what you're saying correct um, because we are using anderson residential style um, that would be our best option to to do uh, achieve that if you're going to use muttons, my strong, extremely strong preference is that they all be external and that if you're going to go internal, you just simply omit them all together. It's not a good look, especially in a historic district. They have internal uh, divided lights. I'm not going to hog all the airtime. I do other committee members have thoughts, especially pertaining to this elevation. 
Um, yeah, I'll jump in on this elevation. Um, just to, I'll start with the MUNs. I, I don't have an issue, uh, particularly on multifamily residential buildings like this with internal MUNs only because of the life cycle issues with cleaning um, those internal MUNs. I, I, I agree with Alex that external is preferred, but um, being considered of the life cycle issues with the building, um, I don't have an issue with buildings like this having them, especially on new builds. Um, the cornice on the lower brick, uh, I don't believe is appropriate because it is uh, where it's located on the elevation. You know, I don't think makes sense. I believe it is jarring, especially in scale. Um, I I don't mind the three over two in that um, particular composition, um, but I, I think it when juxtaposed on the opposite elevation, like it's slide 14, um, you all of a sudden switch and do a two over three. I think you should pick one or the other in order to create some sort of synergy between the elevations, especially if that's uh, in the same cross section of the building. Um, and, and I also uh, question if you're using the same color. So if, if this is the, uh, I don't remember the Harry, uh, is it Harry Onyx or is it, uh, Harry Wood quartz zinc. Um, if you're doing this with the vertical um, panel reveals, and then you're also doing it with what looks like a large format panels and joints, um, I think it should be the same texture wherever this material is uh, deployed so that it creates a bit of a consistency of architectural language across the building. Um, so on, on this particular slide, those are the, the comments that I have. Sorry, Dan, I made you jump between uh, two slides there. Um, I just echo these comments. I feel very strongly that the cornice either needs to be removed or preferably raised along with the brick. And then at that point, you only have, you know, one story of windows remaining. They could be consistent with with the rest of the building. Um, but, you know, the definition of a cornice is that it's at the top of the, of the building. So I think that if you're going to have a corner, it should be close to the top. Yeah, um, if I can just respond, you know, I, I don't think we have any issue removing that cornice piece. Um, again, our, our strong position is that raising that brick up, we just become A then B then A then B then A then B, as opposed to trying to get some different um, feels textures uh, to the south elevation. It was really our our design thought there. It was also in reaction. This is Graham um, with the ownership group. You know, it was a reaction to the request that you didn't have that repetition. We got the feedback that you know we were too repetitive and that the massing needed to be broken up, and so that was the design intent is to answer that feedback. That's good. Well, if you brought the brick all the way up, you could also achieve that by having some relief, uh, pulling one or pushing the other uh, to break up the, the expanse there. I mean, there are many ways of doing it, but that's another one. And then this was not brought up last time, but it was brought up, I think, the prior time. Has there been any more study on, you see there at the bottom at the pedestrian level, the openings for the garage, uh, creating any more screening for the, the garage there? So as, um, as, you, like, as you walk past as a pedestrian or even as a driver to your immediate right if you're heading west will be the opening seeing the, the internal parking garage so um this is brian jorzinski with the design team here guys um speaking through jen's computer um so two two parts to respond to that alex one is that um the sill height of those openings is 42 inch guard height, which should block a, a great deal of, of headlight view and, and things of that into uh, 
the parking areas. So, so there's, there's a limited view in and out of there based on the height of that sill relationship to the, to the floor level inside. Um, and then with, with the view from the, the bridge, just looking in there again, it, our feeling was that the, the limited height into what's, what's open is, is fairly acceptable. And if we did too much screening and blocking, then, then we're borderline, not an open garage. So we, we looked at some things at high level, but, but didn't study a real material closure for those, for those openings. I wonder if we could go to slide 26. I think you can see there Brian's comment about that um, that panel inset into those openings is intended to uh, be that screen for headlights. Okay, so if I understand your position is that, especially on that view that's on the screen, you're not even going to see an automobile because you're looking up and there's a screen which would block off any headlights, taillights, et cetera. Correct. Correct. And then, but on the, on the south elevation, just given the bridge elevation, you're looking down into the garage a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, I, yes, but it really depends on where you're standing. Um, some of the screening and fencing that's on the bridge in reality has been removed from our rendering for, for aesthetic purposes. Um, and, and some of this is is our best guess at some things, right? I mean, rendering software can take us so far, but with the existing yes, at some point you'll be looking down at it, and at other points you'll be looking up at it, and it's, it's all fairly limited. Um, and you're probably fifteen to twenty feet away from the building when you're on the bridge, so so you're not staring like keeping time right in somebody's window. There's some there's some separation. Other comments, other committee members. I mean, just on the on the garage itself, I, I know I've said this in past um, past iterations of this. I, I think um, the design team has done a very good job, actually, of of screening the garage in this building. It's a very difficult thing to do on these types of buildings, um, especially when you consider. When you start to approach having to do a conditioned garage when you screen them too much um, and i think because of the proximity to the bridge where you're going to have you know it's a transient approach where you're going to have vehicles on the bridge on your left in this view and then you're going to have the garage on the right i i don't have any issues with the garage um you know i think some of the issues on the building you still need discussion but on the garage itself um, i have absolutely no issues with the garage as it stands Was there a mural added in this iteration that wasn't there before? Um, there is on the open market page. Uh, 26 perhaps. Um, just because the, the comment here was, um, you know, we didn't see the planters that were indicated. You can see, kind of see them halfway through. Um, that it wasn't, uh, there was some feedback that the tunnel wasn't welcoming and inviting. Um, so we did take some time to study the reuse of that salvage material, um, those columns, the heights, the nice uh, line that those create from uh, viaduct side, um, almost to our, our bridge that we're looking at there. Um, and then the open market, yes, some kind of mural, will it be this? No, but providing an opportunity or you know, perhaps it's even just signage when the open market is there that that's temporary um, or, you know, an event thing, but just trying to better show the um, activity and, and things that could be happening here that it is a bit more welcoming than perhaps the last rendering indicated. Is that something that this board will have to approve once the art or signage um, is decided on? Dan, I think maybe that's a question for you. Yes, yeah, we need to review all signage and any um, art installations or murals, yeah. Okay. And understood, not asking for approval of that particular mural at this point, but just uh, show, show that 
tunnel is, is what it could be when it's activated. Okay, thank you. Um, can I ask a question specific to slide 18? So the building, um, as I've understood it over this last several iterations, has trended more towards kind of a muted um, palette and some of the, the um, shapes and composition of the facades have kind of started to um, kind of move away from being a bit more loud on some of the expression of some of the um, facade compositions and they've started to pull back a little bit so that they um, took advantage of some larger gestures so that there wasn't so many things going on. Um, this slide though and then there's a slide that renders the north elevation as well the the ivory color of this panel uh, against the the charcoal and the black and the brick stands out it's kind of a contrasting version of that concept at least to me and, the, and it might not be an actual concept but just the way i'm interpreting some of the design intent um, so i just wanted to ask you kind of what the decision making process is in in this ivory color um, and kind of how that fits in with some of the other material design decisions that you've made. Um, well, see, we started with um, not wanting to be so dark. Um, I think our biggest struggle was the proportion of these lighter pieces um, and, and trying to make this building more vertical versus the 17 story that was originally here, right? right. Introducing those lighter elements to express that. And so we, this, this presentation, we really removed that light material when it ran horizontal, um, didn't seem to be having the same effect as when it went vertical. Um, and so removing those two pieces, we still felt the, the light color added to the composition of the building nicely. Um, we also took into effect that everybody had um, positive things to say about the viaduct side, um, very little comment about the use of the light color on that side. So we did change that one piece that, that had that horizontal light element to mimic uh, what we proposed on the front, um, but felt that those light pieces still provided some relief from a very a, a much darker palette. Okay. Yeah, I th I think my reaction to it is, um, it it seems to me like a remnant of kind of a previous iteration still, where um, it stands in such stark contrast to some of the other now materials and, and compositions and, and um, design decisions on the building that it. Um, Perhaps it's just maybe a little bit too light, you know, just if it's, if it's 10, 15% darker, um, or if it's just maybe it's a little bit 10, 15% less of it. And um, just to try and draw the building into a more cohesive palette, um, I think that to me would tip this from being something that's not quite there yet into something that um, could, could really hold this corner um, pretty well. But I'd be interested to hear what um, other committees have on this particular item. I will offer one more one more thought we had too is that that the gray masonry, the rectangular kind of two story pieces, um, as, as we kept taking that uh, that light tan titanium white, um, a little bit less, then we just felt we were too close to that masonry and not letting that gray masonry um, kind of be the cool element it was, um, just as as another thought we had. Anyone else? I, I mean, I feel like my comments on this have been pretty consistent um, and that I agree that the the white or off white is um, the contrast is just too stark with the other colors and materials. Um, but my bigger issue is still going to be with that floating cornice and, and how, you know, the brick kind of stops mid building and, and I think 
you know, I, I'm generally, and I said this a couple of meetings ago, I'm not someone who's going to say, let's break up the massing. I think that those comments maybe came a little bit stronger from landmarks. And so as you're presenting, I can hear you maybe responding more to them rather than than us. Um, and I think why it's a little bit more successful in the back is because you do have so many different elevations and setbacks and reliefs, whereas especially from um, traveling from the east, it's a much, um, you know, flatter elevation. And, and so if we are going to, you know, break up the massing, as we call it, um, I just, I like it to feel more intentional. I know, you know, you mentioned the 12 inches, um, stepping it back there. I mean, I just, I think that that is to support the change of materials more than anything else. You know, you're not changing use. It, there's, it doesn't feel like a natural relief. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm not a fan of, of the off weight consistently, but I, I just, the floating cornice and, and the way that that brick stops so abruptly is something that I'm, I'm struggling with the most. And, um, I know you want to move on and we want, we want you to move on too. Um, so I don't know if there's, um, a desire to make a motion and I, you know, I would add a condition that the brick and cornice be, um, brought up to be consistent with the rest. Um, unless you are interested in other types of, um, you know, reliefs or setbacks that would, um, change that more. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Whitney, I would yeah. second your motion. Right. I would support a motion, Whitney, along the lines that you just said, raising the brick and the cornice up, uh, in line with the end. Uh, I would also add to study the color differential that Christopher had raised uh, there in the plaza area uh, to a, a darker hue. If I understood Christopher's uh, just at this point there. Um, and then uh, I know there's some disagreement here, but I would prefer just to have the muttons omitted altogether. I, I can't abide uh, muttons in between panes in a historic district. It's just, it, Maintenance aside, I, it's wholly inappropriate in my mind. I, I, it's the one thing my eye goes to. I can't unsee it, so I apologize. But those are, uh, Whitney, if you're making a motion, those would be my considerations. Okay. Um, Jen, do those three conditions feel okay to you? I mean, Jen, sorry, before you even answer, I think the one thing that I would jump in here is on that, um, Bridge side of the south elevation is, you know, in lieu of the only option being raising that brick. If um, Geis is, is um, wanting to keep the brick where it's at, just removing the cornice uh, from the lower brick section uh, to keep their intent of wanting to provide a different motif along that elevation. I I would I would I guess consider that, but I think the the best preference is to raise the brick, especially because keep in mind, like we talked last time, this is when you look north from Irishtown Bend. This is what you see, yeah. This is what you see. This is yep. this has to be, you know, appropriate for what this neighborhood, what this city, what this state, and in fact, even what the nation is investing in. Uh, you know, money from the National Park Service, from the state of Ohio, the city foundations. When you look north, this is what your this is your view shot. Um, and so, you know, we really have to hot hold this to the pinnacle of of, of our standards here. And so right. I would really urge this to go all the way up. In and, fact, I mean, you know, if I had a magic wand and it's not my wand, but uh, I'd make the whole thing brick and then have push and pull on the facade to give the relief that were desired. Uh, but sure. That's, that's, um, the other thing I had mentioned um, that I, I think warrants inclusion is the charcoal color being the same, whether it has vertical lines or it's a panel uh, system so that it's the same execution of that color material wherever it occurs. So Whitney, do you have a, a good sense of the conditions to make a motion? Chris, can you repeat the, you wanna add a condition 
Will you repeat the charcoal part so um, I can get this correctly? Yes. Yeah, so uh, let me scroll to the actual material presentation. So anywhere the quartz zinc uh, material occurs, it has the same joint pattern. That'll cover it. Yes, I guess just to summarize for myself in my notes, um, well, I guess Whitney crafts a motion. Um, and we will need two motions, by the way, because we have technically two case numbers. The demolition, you know, is still uh, needs to get formal reapproval as well. So that's case 23-099, um, just the demolition of the existing buildings that have been discussed um, probably at nauseum at this point. Um, and then case 23-100 is for the new construction. Um, and it sounds like there is, you know, it, like you're working on a motion to approve with conditions that the cornice all be at the same height as far as where the, the brick terminates and that cornice line on the building is located. And that there will be a color study to ensure that the colors are more cohesive with a few notes about you know, the zinc uh, patterning joints and the ivory color, but those are, I guess, more notes for the applicant to kind of take into account as they develop their color study. And then that exterior muttons are required where muttons are going to be used. So really just the, the corner line be all at the same level, there'd be a color study done and that any muttons be exterior. I don't know if that summarizes what you guys have been Dan, that sounds right to me. Does that sound right to everybody else? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, Whitney, uh, since we have two case numbers, let's take the new construction first. So, uh, Whitney or someone else prepared to make a motion in line with Dan's comments or Dan's notes? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to get this accurately. Um, I will make a motion to bring the brick and cornice up to um, the same height as other brick and cornices um, for the windows to have exterior muttons, um, for the quartz zinc to have the same joint pattern, and for a color study to be done um, on the off-white um, portion of the building um, for a more appropriate color palette. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Christopher. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. All right. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Flaherty? Yes. Ms. Land? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Persons? Yes. Mr. Trevisano? Yes. And uh, Mr. Frondorf? Yes. All right, Mr. Chairman, the motion passes unanimously. Um, Thank you. We'll now take up uh, the demolition and uh, Dan remind committee members uh, what we are voting on here. Um, it would be easiest to go to the site plans. Wow. Um, I think, yeah, just identify what is coming down and then the conditions from previously. My memory serves are to reutilize those component parts in the new piece. So if we could just identify what's coming down and where those parts are going. Yeah, they did submit um, a salvage plan. So the, the, the building that's going to be maintained is the old ticket office, this T-shaped building here. Uh, the rest of the garage structure is going to be removed. Um, so yeah, here's their what they submitted as far as the salvage plan goes that was required in the previous approval of the demolition. Um, so I don't know. If, uh, yeah, and then and then that's it's going. Is that what we're seeing on our screen here? 
Yeah, I don't know. Jen, do you want to, I guess, clarify where some of these elements are being used? I know they, they kind of get used throughout the lower levels. Yes, and I will say we did not do much with the, the salvage piece as far as what was previously approved kind of got translated or, or handed over to us as we um, got engaged on this project. So assuming that was all previously approved and good, we are keeping those, those same recommendations for salvage as, as the previous approvals. And then yes, if you go to the next slide. Um, so our attempt here is to reuse those pieces to create the piers um, with that Art Deco-ish um, detail at the top. And, and kind of put some order to the garage openings and that tunnel uh, walkway, um, because as their traffic flows and patterns, they're not 100% perfectly aligned and trying to do those things. And then they're infilled uh, with that textural Art Deco arched panel um, with a nice uh, new coursing brick. Uh, I don't know if soldiers or, or roll lock, but some top and bottom piece to kind of make things fit with the sizes of the salvage material and the, the size of the uh, textural pieces. Uh, but yes, mostly in the tunnel, creating those, recreating those piers um, to reminisce for, for the existing and, and what we'll still see on the ticket booth. Dan, could you go to slide 27? So that, that part there, that's uh, the right, bottom right, the east elevation, that whole massing there, is that shown on slide 28? Not in kind. The the corner pieces are, are reused to create the, the towers that are shown in that in that view. And then a lot of the pieces within the middle field we plan on using in, in landscaping beds and paper walkway kind of installations. And the plaza area. Oh, okay. So the only parts that are being reincorporated in the structure are those okay. columns there. Correct. And and then the other pieces are scattered about in landscaping. Correct. I think we actually expanded some of the, the previous highlight areas to, to snag a few more points. <laughs> Sorry, did everyone hear that? I'm, I can make a motion to approve as <clears throat> as presented. I'll second. All right. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Hearing none. Dan, call the roll. Okay. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Flaherty. Yes. Ms. Land. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Persons. Yes. Mr. Trevisano? Yes. And Mr. Frondorf? Yes. And Mr. Chairman, the motion uh, to approve is presented, passes unanimously. Um, all right, well that, um, I guess we will, I guess be in contact, Jen, with you and your team um, about landmarks and next steps, but thank you very much for presenting today. Um, and that is all the uh, cases we have for the day. Um, our next scheduled meeting is not the 19th, but it would be the third, ah, October 3rd. Yes. Thank you, Jessica. Um, yeah, it'll be October 3rd. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for an agenda for that. All right, thank you. Uh, if there's no other business, then we will adjourn the meeting. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.